looking for, this is a private enterprise, Cyanco. It's not funded through any of the agencies, uh, no government agencies involved in this funding. We are a private company that is dealing with the mining industry, and in order to um, deliver the product to the customers, we pay for the, the site. Can you go back to your fourth slide then? Only one of well, well, I can only answer one at a time. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> Which slide is that? Page four. Mm -hmm. Those are regulators. Yeah, these are different regulators that we fall under their purview. So they regulate the transportation. So under their purview, does is a NEPA process then triggered under the purview of OSHA and/or the EPA and/or the Department of Transportation, and has the X. So is there a NEPA process that the citizens of the Sunless Valley and Blanca... I'm not, I'm not familiar with the, with the terminology Max? or the acronym you're using. Well, the NEPA process is an Envir Environmental Protection Agency. Oh, okay. Max, that's, a, that's beyond mine. Yeah, to my knowledge, for this project here in St. Louis, uh, I mean, in Costilla County, no, the NEPA project doesn't, doesn't apply for, for this particular project because of the way it's designed. Well, a closed loop and, and low emissions. This lady here has been patient, yes. Uh, my name is Judy Ann. I live in the San Quentin Cristos, just in the base. Okay. Speak loud, honey. <coughs> my name is Charity Ann. I live in San Quentin Cristos. And we'll try to repeat the questions right. as well. Um, I have a background in environmental health and hazmat. I did that while I was in the military. I was a major corpsman. Good. And a couple of my things, my main concern is the water quality. Okay. And you say you bring in the water, it's a closed cycle in the system. But my question is, where is your water source originally coming from, and where is the water that you move the tankers going back to? Yeah, and do you big. test before, during, and after a consistent amount of water, environmental, the soil, the air, and the air? Okay. I'm Great. Do you want to... Um, well, I... I don't understand the question. Entirely. Well, I think she's she's really speaking. She's she's really speaking, trying to understand. I think the process of how this product is manufactured. Um, we, uh, but, but you mentioned about water, right? So where's the water coming from? You say you're. The water is coming from the caustic soda solution that we purchased. That's not the source. I'm talking to Sam. Are we talking about the Rio Grande? Are we talking about the Colorado River? Where is that water? Are you okay, okay. I, I think I understand your question and can answer it. There is no water locally required here except for... No, no, no. In Nevada, what happens to that water there? The water goes with the product. The product is 70% water. Right. The water that gets mixed with the product goes to the mine, goes onto the heap leach pad, and leaches the gold out. And it's a closed loop system. So it's continually recycled. Okay, let me. Let me there is no water going out to anywhere. Let me go back over here. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you locate your facility closer to the gold mine? Okay, why don't we locate the facility closer to the gold mine? We did have a total of five different locations that we examined we need a certain amount of space as you saw in the layout of the truck or layout of the location to turn around the trucks a minimum of about four to five acres the five locations that we looked at this is the only one in the valley I can't say what the other ones are there were three uh, there were four total that were outside of the valley much closer much desirable to us from that perspective as far as distance not a one of them had the need of the, the requirements that we had for the space to turn around our trucks. We really didn't have much uh, other alternative. This is our top alternative because of the space available. And the rail siding. And the rail siding, of course. Okay. Let, me, let me go up here to the front. We'll just start working over to the right here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Debbie Pettigrew. I was born and raised in this We can't hear you. Okay. As we're, I really don't need that. As yes, we're my you yes, you do. Yes, you do. We okay. cannot hear you, Donna. Okay, um, Mr. Rodriguez and Charity have both hit on my question, so now I'd just like to make a comment. Um, San Luis Valley is made up of hundreds of underground aquifers. Amen. You cannot 100% guarantee that there's not going to be any spillage into these aquifers. These are farmers, and this is all our livelihood, our recreational area, everything. It is, that water is used for everything in the San Luis Valley. Okay, and one of the things they asked is... 
it, it's liquid form. You said yes. it's in liquid form. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's probably the most dangerous that it can be. And actually, yes, the, it the, is. The dryer is is more, but go ahead. Okay, and um, the next thing was. Okay, if I don't see how it could be cost effective, we're not we're not going to benefit from five people. There was one little tiny guy right here. It's not even worth one little tiny guy's life. Okay, if there's an accident in that way. I agree. And the, okay. You cannot 100% guarantee that there will not be any spillage in the water that serves this whole valley. We, right. So the question is about, you know, could there be spillage that would get in the lock, aquifer and into your, the water system here? The question that she asked was, where did the water come from in Winnemucca? After it's all used, what happens to the water? Thank you. Okay. The water, effectively, the water evaporates. I think that's the answer to your question. Imagine... No, no, listen. Sodium cyanide is a salt, just like table salt. If you dissolve table salt in water, what happens if you leave it out on the counter, out on the, out on the stove? The water evaporates. It's the same here. The water slowly evaporates at the mine site. It doesn't at our, at our locations. But more directly, ma'am, to your question, if you remember the picture that we had up in that first slide, we have about, uh, I forget how many, over a thousand acres in Winnemucca. We lease out the majority of that to local farmers growing alfalfa and oats. They also raise cattle there. In fact, we had a break in our fence and we had one of their bulls come in and chase one of our employees for a while until we managed to get it out of there. So we're very familiar with what farmers require because we live and work with them all the time. Can we absolutely 100% guarantee? I can't absolutely 100% guarantee that an asteroid won't strike here tonight. But past performance, 25 years of safe operation, and this is our livelihood. We do what we do real good because it's our livelihood. That's what that's what's important to us. And and you know what? Our operations manager in Winnemucca lived in a little farmhouse right on our property, right next to our operations. And and we have our own town residents there that have seen twenty five years worth of safe operations. Do you want to talk? You, you want to talk about again the the terminal location, Steve, and, and with what prevents the 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 liquid from getting into their aquifers? I want to oh, know if you question. actually test the land, the soil, and the air before, during, and after. You never answered that question. We have Viamaca is not this valley. We're at 7,400 feet right now. Surrounded yep. by mountains. Okay. Uh, at our plant, I don't know what right now we're going through the process of finding out the regulatory agency's requirements of what testing before, during, and after is. At our plant in Winnemucca, we have water and air. We have a Title V air permit. We have a water pollution control permit, uh, which we do testing before, during, and after, monthly testing of the aquifers, uh, testing for cyanide, testing for total dissolved solids, testing for probably all of the things that you're that you're talking about in this I'm not sure of the requirement at in order for a, a uh, uh, terminal like this if that's required if that is required with that's what that's what we do let me tell you just a little bit more about when they go in to put down the concrete liner first they excavate it out and they put in a high density HDPE liner underneath it in order to have a uh, like tertiary containment then the then they have a concrete uh, containment on top of that that all drains to a sump and anything that goes into that sump is pumped into a tank pumped back into one of the rail cars and brought back to our site where since our product is 70 percent water we're able to take any water that is used on our site that in that comes down in the form of rain or snow or wash down water anything like that and incorporate it just put it right into the product um, and and then it's delivered to our customers when that product is delivered um, 
picture. For example, if you if you look at another chemical that is loaded from tanks into tankers and delivered to a to its uh, final destination, look at like gasoline tankers and that. They load it in a closed system or they load it into the tanker, take it to the to the end user and use a, a hose to deliver it into that tank. That's how we'll deliver it to the mine site. Once it's at the mine site, they take it out of that tank, they use a pump, and they direct it into their contained process that has similar uh, environmental monitoring that, that we, we just talked about as far as air and water permits at the mine sites and leak detection systems down gradient of the uh, uh, of those of where they're using the product in order to, uh, to to make sure that it's contained in that system when they put our product into their uh, in, into their circulating cyanide solution at the site, that's when it gets diluted down approximately a thousand to one from the concentration that we deliver it to them there. Did, did the, we, we'll take more questions, but, uh, but did that answer the question that you were curious about there? <laughs> let, let me go on this side of the room over here. Hi, sir. Over here. No, my name is Justin Guru. I'm the executive director of Coneos Clean Water down in Antonito. Okay. And I'd like to go back to the slide where you have the image of the transfer station. The artist rendering? Yes. This one? Can you go one more? This one? So here you have it labeled as a transloading station. The entire process that you've described is a transfer. Yeah. You're not transloading. You 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 described a method of moving the sodium cyanide from one container into another one. Okay. And so I would like to know why you're calling it a transload station because that is not what it is, and that has different regulatory um, meanings applied to it rather than a transfer. Transfer station would be more regulated. So everyone, please call this transfer, not transload. Okay. So the the question or the the issue that was brought up was the loose use of the words transfer and transloading and that is my fault and it was due to uh, basically an ignorance of uh, what the difference might be there. He stated that a transfer station you believe falls under different uh, regulatory purview than a transloading station. So we, we are not adverse to regulatory oversight. We live with it every day and, and, uh, and our um, our children grew up in the towns where we're where we're active right now as well. So, am I correct in understanding that you agree that it is a transfer station, not a transload? I would. I haven't looked at the definition of each one of these things that we've talked about, but I have described the process of taking the product out of the rail tanker and putting it into a uh, a, a semi tanker. It would so, be appropriate to call it a transfer station. Okay. Thank you for your input. Going to back, sir. And then I'll come back over here. Kind of a grassroots question. I just had a septic tank put in this year. Okay. And this valley has a perk rate that they've never seen before. They put five gallons of water in a hole eight foot down and then ten inches beyond that. And before they turned around, the water was gone. If you have a spill beyond your sump, it goes right into the aquifer. Yep. Yep. Okay, you want to talk about That's why all of the trans all of the transferring uh, uh, um, process takes place over a containment with the tertiary, like I said, the HDEP liner underneath it. And what we do, we have these at our plant in Winnemucca as well. Those uh, the that liner underneath reports to a sump, and that sump can be tested to find out if anything has come through the concrete and down to the level of the of the thick plastic liner that is put down underneath to contain any potential. In other words, the, none of the trans... No leaks prior or after the sump. What's the freezing None, none of the transfer is done except over that concrete and plastic Salt. line area. So there That's is right. No the tanker is secured prior to leaving the site, and it comes back empty and is loaded onto the site. We do everything in our power at all of the trans lo transfer locations and and uh, <laughs> uh, in order to maintain the uh, the environment and and like I said, it's it's our in the in the, where we okay the the scope. The difference in scope, and, and it does not at all diminish anybody's concerns, but this, the plant that we have in Winnemucca 
um, is many times in magnitude and difference in the incoming raw materials that we use, the process that takes place on site, as compared to this system that I have described to you that we, that we have proposed here. And we operate successfully and have proven through uh, environmental testing throughout all those years and everything of uh, to not be um, causing a negative effect, effect to the environment or the citizens in the area that we live. And like I said, the, the town there has grown to embrace us and loves having us there. I, I defer to this brother just okay. a second. All right. Will the sump hold a whole car? I'm sorry? Will the sump hold a whole car? Will a sump hold a, a whole car? I don't believe that the tank, that the sump is designed to hold a whole rail car, but the rail car is offloaded from the top, and... They're both there. They are there, that, that is correct. <laughs> but it only, only comes out of the top. It doesn't come out of the bottom by gravity. Uh, you, you didn't want to ask a question, sir? I do want to ask one more you want me to Jim go first? Okay, sure, Jim. You do realize that this is right next to a tourism route. We have trains every day in the summer going up and down here carrying tourists. And that's, that's, our, that's one of our major incomes in the valley is tourism. The, the question was about, about being on a tourist route and having uh, uh, tourists go up and down the road. Uh, Twenty, you know, around the around the year. The railroad. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't hear him say railroad. I'm sorry. I know what a choo choo is. <laughs> we there are several other areas that if you um, that are around the the western United States where we operate, where there are historic gold mining regions. Uh, Virginia City, uh, Nevada, uh, Cripple Creek right here. We are currently delivering into Cripple Creek. Uh, Oatman, Arizona is a small mining town that has similar uh, draw and uh, tourist value. And we work around the uh, that, uh, the schedule in order to, Which to, to best uh, avoid those, those times. Okay, sure. All right, let me go over here. Sir, I'll come back over here. I'm sorry, I thought you said you wanted to, okay. I don't know if, you might have to come up, I don't think the court will reach all the way back there, Dave. I can hear your question. I want to ask about your safety being different from China. Oh, okay. The, the incident in China? Yes. Okay. Okay. Dave Max. was curious about the incident that happened in in China uh, within the last several months and how that differs from what we do. And uh, so the incident in China had to do with dry sodium cyanide being stored in a warehouse with explosive materials in there as well. There, there was some, that's right, there was some uh, erroneous information that first came out that cyanide blew up that building. Cyanide is not explosive. Cyanide was impacted by the explosion and distributed because of that explosion. The site that we uh, that we plan to put together and where we have those, we do not have explosives stored with cyanide. Our cyanide is 70% water, it's not flammable, and it's not explosive. What time does it have explosive fumes? Human health. What kind of human health is that? Can we what kind of human health problems? Yeah. Cyanide is an acute toxin. And if ingested and had an overexposure, it creates what's called metabolic asphyxiation, which causes a person not to be able to process oxygen. So the keys are to not have exposure to cyanide, which is what, which is why all of these, why all of these systems that we've talked about, as far as the the uh, engineering design of the terminal itself, of the vehicles that hold them, and the the people that load and unload the tankers themselves, also use personal protective equipment to make sure that if there are any drips that they don't get on them, if they do if they do get some cyanide on a person's skin, there are safety showers right there in order to wash that off. The, the people at highest risk are actually the employees that are loading or unloading. It hasn't happened at a terminal facility, but they're at, at a higher risk. Let me, let, me go, let me go back over on the other side over here. We were over here, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Uh, on the couplers, uh,
how often are they changed down or maintenance? Okay. How often are the, the couplers or the Campbell lock the fittings? The Campbell lock fittings, or are you talking about couplers on rail cars? Okay. Uh, regular maintenance is done in order to determine if, first of all, the these are stainless steel fittings that are used. This is, I think, a... Uh, if that's stainless or, or uh, just a demo valve, but we use stainless steel. They're bigger than that as well. Uh, they're three-inch valves. The the uh, part of them that is most often uh, changed out is an inter is a gasket that seats and uh, um, and. But if those if the gaskets if it's got a fresh gasket in it and the valve is not containing product, the either the whole valve itself or the ears are replaced. Um, it, it's a uh, it's an ongoing maintenance and observation of the of the system. I can't speak to uh, the uh, maintenance on on rail cars. Mike, uh, is that Matt, Matt. Matt, I'm sorry, Matt. What's the question? Guys? The question had to do with maintenance on couplers of rail cars. The American Association of Railroads issues standards for couplers and trucks and maintenance of rail vehicles that are inspected at interchange points from the origin to the destination by the railroads that handle them. They're required to inspect them. They're handed off from one to another, and a car that doesn't meet specifications is set out. Your cars are unique, and uh, uh, in that they have what's called a shelf type coupler. There's gears above and below the coupler, so that if there's a derailment or something happens, the cars stay together in a chain as opposed to going hither and yon. Okay, let me go over here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you tell us you have 120,000 safe deliveries. You can't guarantee that there won't be any accidents in this community. Less than 5% of a teaspoon is fatal. Then you come and you insult us by telling us a million dollars a year. Well, you know what? This community and the health of our children, our seniors, and the rest of the population is worth in five to six jobs that you're offering I agree. And a million dollars. Yes, Please no. take it to another community. Well, the, the places where we have terminals, for example, in Winnemucca, don't consider them to be eyesores, uh, Rocky. I do. I consider them to be eyesores. If you have so much room, why don't you build it in Idaho, in Nevada? Sir, I think it's my turn to ask a question, if I may. I my well, I, I, I'm trying to get through it. There's a lot of people who are trying to ask questions. I'm trying to get as many as I can in a row. <laughs> okay, Steve. Yeah, Weeks ago, I was driving across the railroad crossing and sliced the tire, meaning the railroad couldn't even keep that up. It's not your responsibility to, for the safety of the tracks. Right, that's, the, that's a railroad issue. Right. Oh. No, that's what, what is your closer question? I'm sorry. That's something which you can't control. That is out of your control. And I don't see the railroad getting the right hit. Okay, Steve mentioned, Steve, Steve said that he had, he ran over the railroad track, sliced the tire, and that is an indication of what he feels is poor maintenance on the rail tracks. Um, that is something that is outside of the control of Cyanco, but Matt, do you want to address that issue? How many derailments have we had this year? There's an issue with the crossing, and uh, there's a lot of things that have to be you know, I'm going to be here all night till everybody's done. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Okay. Okay. Well, you guys did. Uh, see Matt afterwards, and we talk about that. Let me go over here to the lady. I'm going to work my way back to the left. Hi, my name is Carol, and I, I live in West Nevada. Okay. My property abuts those railroad tracks. Okay. Okay. You guys are transporting your product via those tracks. Correct. Okay. If something goes wrong with the tracks, like that man said, mm -hmm. okay, I have all this stuff in my backyard. <coughs> you know, and I mean, this this is ridiculous. You guys are supposed to be following OSHA regulations and there also EPA. Happening. We all know here what happened with the EPA <laughs> yeah. Yeah. on yep. the Animus. So, what, what guarantees do you have 
uh, that people move here, even from another state, where, enough, where a lot of this has happened, okay? Not only California, but New York, too. And, and trying to get away from nonsense like this, and to have a little peace and serenity, and to have clean air and good water, Sure. and then we have to wind up with something like this. I don't think it's right. Okay, so the, the question was about the rail cars taxes? coming up, and what if a rail car yeah, derailed? Your, yeah, because it's your property. And on your, on, on, on okay. your property. So. Now, well, what's the upkeep of those rail cars that I had 25 of them lined up as I was driving here? Was it Carol? So, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Carol's concern was about the upkeep on rail cars, maintenance on rail cars, maintenance on the tracks themselves. Um, it is a sore subject, and we're not proud of it. We don't back the EPA either about the, the incident that recently occurred. Um, uh, but there are regulatory facilities that uh, govern. The FRA governs rail uh, inspection, rail uh, tracks, what, what, rail, what is uh, acceptable, what is not acceptable, how often they have to be accept, expect, inspected. It, it, that is run by government code. Yeah. If there was a derailment of a rail car at her property, what would happen to the, to the property? Anything? If there was a derailment of, you, of a rail car in your property, what would happen? If there was a derailment of a rail car in your property, that would be addressed as a, a they would go in to re-rail them. And uh, I believe that, I don't know how close yours is to the facility, but I'm, they have to go They have to go rather slow. It's not on a main line. Correct. So the trains go through right next to your property at, at 60 miles an hour. What what is the speed? Go ahead. Speed for freight trains on the SLRG and mountain territory is 10 miles an hour, and on the valley on the valley floor is 25. All right, 10 miles an hour, 25. Go back to the later Why is that? Let me come back over here. Does it have something to do with the audio? Sir, okay. Thank you for recognizing me finally. My name is Jamie Day. I teach a lot of your kids over here at the school part time. I'm a sub. Most of the time, I'm a musician. The rest of the time, I'm a homeowner. We own property here and pay taxes for 20 years. Here's my question to you. I have two. It's a double question. Okay. Number one. How many counties in Colorado turned you guys down before you settled on the poorest county in the state? And number two, how many? Please wait. Okay. I ask my so, Tom, question? go ahead, Jamie. My second question is: oh, okay. this. How many of you representatives are planning to move here permanently, full time, raise your children and grandchildren? Right here with us in Costilla okay. County. Okay. It, the, the first question was, how many places have we gone to that have uh, turned, us turned us away? We, we have not gone anywhere uh, at, that has had it. We, we have not gone and proposed to put a terminal in Halsenburg. We said, okay, in case there is a... A misunderstanding about a comment that was made earlier. We originally had, we've looked at, we've not made any proposals to any other place before coming here, and we did not target you because you're a poor county. And we live, like I said, our plant where we do live full time, and our kids have grown up. I've raised children from their. My youngest is 23, my oldest is 32 now. In Winnemucca, in a small town environment, the quality of life was very good, um, and despite having a chemical facility in town. And I think that was reflected in what our mayor had to say, but um, I appreciate your, your concern very much, and that's why we're here is to answer your questions. Not here to be confrontational, we're just here to answer your questions. In the Do you want to add time about the other sites? Yeah, let me just add one thing about that. If, if anyone has anyone here heard that we've been turned down somewhere else yeah. Yeah. okay let me, let me let me say emphatically that is not true we have not been turned down anywhere else we have not been turned down hold on a second hold on we have looked at a total of five